Hello. Hey, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. How was your weekend? Amazing. I couldn't to attend a, a class the, 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 the last week. Mm -hmm. I was I was on problems. Uh, I was on meeting uh, at the church on Wednesday and Thursday. I remember I was sick. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. okay. So, yeah. uh, how are you feeling now? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm good. Now you're ready. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Good to hear that, okay. How about the others? Uh, Jenny, Sandra, how are you feeling? How are you? How? Good evening, teacher and everybody. Good evening. Well, uh, right now, uh, pretty well, pretty well. Pretty well? Yes, pretty well. That's good, Sandra. That's good. That means you're ready for the last four days of class. Yes. Uh, well, uh, in the first, the first course, because there, we, uh, we are missing two, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Or you, 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 you will a teacher in the next course, teachers? I don't know. I don't know. Um, depends when then when they will start the next course. We'll see. Because uh, uh, we're gonna have vacation. Um, I think you have, well, you have vacation on uh, August 1st because it, we finished the course this week and then next week they're not going to start because of the vacation for August. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. teacher, a uh, 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 course preparation TOEFL have a section about learning vocabulary? Yes. Uh, there are a section where um, learn about, about the uh, 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 nouns, and uh, um, adverbs, adjectives. I, I asked that situation because uh, uh, Sandra, remember I tell about uh, one years ago, receive a, a course, toy, toy course. Mm -hmm. And you tell us uh, probably the same thing, but it's so different in some applications. But I remember in toy course received about vocabulary, identify nouns, adjective, adverbs, applying a context. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing in a TOEFL course. There are a session like this. No, there isn't. Ah, okay. Uh huh. I don't. Uh huh. I. Uh, there is no. I mean, there in in the course there is no a vocabulary section but yes uh -huh. there is vocabulary lists that are important for you to to learn for the TOEFL uh for the TOEFL exam mm -hmm. ah, okay mm -hmm. so there's okay. many different uh lists or common words that they use academically that it's important for you to know ah, okay okay mm -hmm. but in reality most of the TOEFL is just about uh it's there are some unusual words, but mm -hmm. it's, it's more about how much words you already know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I remember about TOEFL course uh, is, is technical uh, and some topics. Exactly. The vocabulary is so different. Yes, the vocabulary is a little bit different. So that's mm -hmm. why I mentioned at the beginning of the course, it's very important. If you plan to take the exam, you need to begin now expanding mm -hmm. the things that you watch. You cannot watch Netflix. You cannot watch Disney. You cannot watch, uh, you know, videos on YouTube. This is not the exam. Yeah, yeah. This is not <laughs> the exam. This is, the, this is for you to, to learn how to speak and learn how to yeah. understand common conversation normal everyday conversation but yeah. the school is completely different it is an academic function it's like a, a lawyer mm -hmm. a lawyer in spanish mm -hmm. the lawyer is they don't learn any any words from other countries they learn spanish words but they learn words specific for that so the important is you need to learn words specific for the different areas the social, the sciences, the natural, these types of areas. In the yeah. chat, I put in a, a link to help mm -hmm. you. In the chat, you can see there's a link to help you with vocabulary. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And here are some of the uh, words that you should know before going into the TOEFL exam. So yeah. if you don't know these words, it's important to understand and read them because it's very, not all of them, but many times it's very common to see many of those types of word. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because instead of saying uh, one after another, or instead of they uh, of saying a certain words, they they use these words. So instead of saying, "Oh, he received a present," um, or "He received a gift," they would change it and they say, "Oh, they bestowed a gift," or "They bestowed." And so it's the same meaning, but it's just different words that you need to expand. So it's more about improving your synonyms and antonyms for your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. So um, last week we were looking at the integrated questions. Remember um, that we had a little bit of practice for the tofu on what it was, how it works. We're going to just watch a quick video for those that did not come on Thursday and or for those of you that forgot, because I know that usually Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we Everybody doesn't pay attention. So let's watch the video one more time to help us remember a little bit about the writing and what is an integrated section in writing. Okay. It's to show how the lecture challenges or... We will now go over the last section of the TOEFL Preparation Course 1, the writing section, integrated writing. Question 1. Integrated writing, read, listen, explain. For the integrated writing, you will read and listen to a lecture. The reading and the lecture will be on academic subject in one of the following areas. Life science, any of several branches of science, such as biology, medicine, anthropology, or ecology, that deal with living organisms and their organizations, life processes and relationships to each other and their environment. Social science, the study of human society and of individual relationships in and to society, including sociology, psychology, anthropology, economics, political science, and history. Physical science, any of the sciences such as physics, chemistry, astronomy, and geology that analyze the nature and properties of energy and non-living matter. Humanities, branches of knowledge that investigate human beings their culture and their self-expression, including the study of languages and literatures, the arts, history, and philosophy. So as we were mentioned at the beginning of the class, if you want to improve your vocabulary for the TOEFL exam, you need to focus in these four areas. Remember, the TOEFL is an academic exam. So you need to learn academic vocabulary regarding life sciences, social sciences, physical science, and humanities. If you are not sure, watch the video again, and they will tell you specifically which types of sciences. For example, biology, anthropology, and so on. And you can find articles or different videos and watch and learn them. Also, for those that came in a little bit late, I put in the chat a link to help you with common vocabulary, academic vocabulary to help you. If before you take the TOEFL, make sure you understand and you read the vocabulary of that is in the list because that is very common to be heard throughout the different talks. Here we have the next part. To begin with, your focus should be on summarizing the main points of the lecture. Do not take notes in full sentence form. You okay, so for those that are a little confused, what is the integrated? Integrated writing section is where you receive input. You receive information. You're going to usually have two types of information. You're usually going to have something you have to read, like an article, and something you have to listen to, like a lecture at a university. Why? Because the exact academic exam. So almost always is going to be a lecture, a university, a school setting, uh, some environment like this is never, almost never going to be a workplace, an office, because it's an academic exam, okay? So what do you do? Do you listen? Do you read? Okay, and then you have to write according to it. That is the integrated. Integrated means that you have many different types of information and you need to combine into one 
and then write a report. Okay, today we're gonna have a little bit of an idea so you can get better at it, but just to make sure that you understand what it is. Use points, expect a structure. The main point will come first, followed by explanations, examples, and reasons. Put things in your own words. Avoid the trap of copying down exact phrases. Make sure you have covered the five W's and how. Do you know who, what, when, where, why, and how? You must mention specific details in your answer. Very important. The other part is always try to answer the questions even if they don't ask you. If they don't ask you what, where, when, why, it doesn't matter. It's your job to answer those questions, okay? It's your job. So when they tell you, boom, you, when you start giving details, oh, did I mention who? Did I talk about what? Did I talk about when? Did I say where? What? Try to get as many of those in there. Remember, you have about 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes between each one. Why 20 to 25 minutes? Because some of them you have a listening and a reading, and then you have 20 minutes for the writing. So this is important, okay? It's important because when you do the reading, you need to read, make sure that you understand. Usually you have a specific time limit, uh, two or three minutes for the reading, and then you have a listening. The listening is as well, two or three minutes, and then you have the time to write, but you are not able to listen again. This is the important you are not able to listen again. So you have to be clear with your ideas or be able to take notes so that, that you know what you're going to write about or information that you think is important. Your next task is to show how the lecture challenges or supports the reading. Begin by typing out an outline so your essay has a clear, coherent structure. You can fill it in and delete as you write. Choose your words carefully so that you are answering the exact question that is asked. Very important. I have seen many, many people get bad scores because they didn't answer the question. They began to write, they began to summarize the article, the listening, but they didn't answer the question. Read the question, make sure you answer it. Make sure your words answer the questions clearly. Now, as far as writing an outline, that depends on you and how fast you write. I think an outline is a great idea if it helps because it helps you organize it. But for me, an outline should only be the main topics. Do not start to develop too much because then you waste too much time in the outline and not enough time with the details in writing. So an outline, for example, introduction, what are you going to introduce? Well, first, you need to start by making sure you answer the questions. You summarize it. You restate it. You paraphrase it. You compare. Whatever they ask you, that's the first one. And then in the next one, the details, the supporting ideas. Just yes, is this because this, this, and this. Did you include what? Did you include why? Did you include how? And then this is the idea. In one moment, we're going to see an example to help you. But that way, you have a better idea of what it is, an outline and also on how to answer it better. Just writing generally about the subject will not get you high marks. Here are some key phrases you can use in your essay. Challenges the reading. Contest, dispute, query, question, doubt, mistrust, object, object to, protest, oppose, resist, defy, face. So this is why is when you see the question, why is the speaker against, okay? Why doesn't the speaker agree with? Oh, why? This is for when the words that you can use. This is challenges the reading, challenges the listening, okay? Challenges is that they don't agree with. Oh, well, uh, they are resistant to a new park in the community because they defy, they oppose, they, they protest. All of those words are similar. For example, in El Salvador, what do people think of, of Bitcoin? Oh, uh, people oppose Bitcoin because, ah, this is the word, oppose. People protest Bitcoin because people resist Bitcoin. All of this is the same idea. The words there are for against. This means you don't agree. Okay. Those are some of the very common words you can use. Supports the reading. Advocate, back, champion, confirm, bear out. 
corroborate, substantiate, validate, verify, vindicate, help, boost, support. Okay. Here are other words. These other words are that yes is agree with it. Yes, they support it. Yes. So ah, uh, do people like uh, Bitcoin? All oh, the people in San Blas, they are they they advocate for Bitcoin because it helps them to ah, this is advocate means that they agree. Okay. They support, they boost, they validate. All of these words means yes. If you have time later and you would like to write it down, write it down. If you want, try to use one or two of them in your writing today. This is the idea. Always try to use the new things. That way it stays with you. Use verbs to indicate that you're summarizing. Suggest, say, report, tell, argue, question, ask, conclude. Okay. Sorry. And the last part is, in your final paragraph at the end oh okay um in conclusion that the in our the argument well the report suggests okay so these are the idea of when you summarize when you're trying to get all of it how do you say it you can use these different words here we're going to take a look we have a integrative writing practice here from our unit, this is kind of what it works like. It's going to be an article that you have, okay? This is the most important. You're gonna have an article, you're gonna have a listening, and then you need to write, okay? okay? Today, we're gonna have a few others, not just this one, but we're gonna take a look at a few more so we can get a better idea of it, okay? So here, I'm gonna share this with you in just a moment, but that way I want you to see the structure. This is normally how you're going to get it, okay? Walter, can you please read the instructions? Okay, teacher. Uh, you'll have three minutes to read the passage. After reading, you'll listen to a lecture regarding the same topic you just read. Finally, you'll have 20 minutes to write a response to question that asks you about the relationship between the lecture you heard and the reading passage. Try to answer the question using information from reading passage and the lecture. Thank Typical. you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much. And as you can see, typically an effective response will be between 250 and 300 words. I told you last week, remember, minimum, minimum, always go for at least 200 words. 200 is the minimum you should be going for every time. Okay. Some people say, I 100, 150. No, 200 is the minimum. And even then you're going to lose points. The more you can do, the better, the longer, the more detail your answers. Okay. And of course, like many places, try to take notes with a pen and paper during whatever you think it's important. Why? Because if you don't, if you don't take notes while you are listening, while you are reading, when you begin the 20 minutes, you're going to lose time. You're going to lose time. And then instead of having 20 minutes for writing, you're going to have five minutes for writing because you're going back. You're trying to take notes. You're trying to, and you won't have this opportunity. Okay. So what does it look like on a normal TOEFL test? It's going to be similar to the following. You're going to have a short passage, for example, here. This is our short passage, right? And this is going to be three minutes. You have three minutes to read this or read it two times. Make sure that you understand it. And then after the reading, you'll have time to listen. There'll now listen to part of a lecture on the topic you just read about. Okay. Ongoing investigations have can't access. There you have. And then we'll just have all of the, the listening part and the listening as well. Then after you finish the listening, ah, that comes the question. And what is the question? Here, summarize the point made in the lecture and explain how the speaker cast doubt on the specific points made in the reading passage. 
Now, what do you understand they are asking you to do? Take a look at that. What is the question specifically asking from you? What do they want? They want you to do what? Tell me, tell me, if this is an exam for the TOEFL, you don't have time to read. You're only in answering. You're taking like five, two minutes. Imagine right now, only to read the instructions is two minutes. You have to understand the quickly, the question. What is the about question? About that topic. About that topic. Okay. So there's going to be a couple of things that you need to do. Number one, summarize the points made in the lecture. So that means from the listening Number one, I need to summarize it. I need to explain all in all what it is. What words can I use for summarizing? Do you remember from the video we use, we learn many words. What words can we use for summarizing? We will now go. Ah, for In summarizing, we can use this. Suggest, say, argue, uh, question, conclude. That's what we can use when we're talking about summarizing. Well, the speaker or the in the lecture, the, uh, the person suggests, the woman suggests that, the woman argues that, the man concludes that. This is for summarizing. That's what we use to summarize the point, number one. Number two, explain how the speaker casts doubt. What is this? What is there? What is this? Cast doubt. What does that mean? Um, expose the doubt. Okay, exactly. So why does the people, the person make you think that it's not correct? Cast doubt is, mm, maybe there's something wrong. I, I don't know, but now you have to think about it. That is cast doubt. Make you doubt, make you think about the specific points made in the reading passage. So in this reading passage, they have some specific points. In this uh, lecture, they have things that go against this. What are the things that go against the reading? And why do they cast out? Why are they not in agreement Okay, with this? And that's the idea. It's clear? Yes, sir. Oh, teacher, uh, it's necessary yeah. uh, when, yeah. when doing that exercise in the talk exam mm -hmm. uh, it's necessary to read even though to listen i imagine no. that the listening is the same thing is the the paragraph no it's not no. in the paragraph one in here is opposite ah. one is the reading and a person doesn't agree with it ah okay, okay. and then you have to listen why the person doesn't agree and you have to explain why the person doesn't agree with the article uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to see an example so that you can get a better idea of how to write and what is expected of you. Okay. okay. Let's look at an example so we can see. Here is an example of how you would get a great score. This would be a very nice score. Now, why a very nice score? Look, we have five paragraphs. We have an introduction. We have a body. We have a conclusion. This is how you get a good score. Not writing one paragraph and only like a chat, right? Some people don't know how to use the even the in Spanish, el punto. They they don't know how to use it. They they write and they write Ay, the capital letters. They don't use them. The commas, maybe never use them in the life. You have to use them. If you don't use them, you get less and less and less points. It's necessary to use them. So today we're going to read an example so you can get a better score next time. Sandra is going to read the introduction. Jenny is going to read the first. Jancy is going to read the part where it says second. Jefferson is going to read where it says final. Okay. And Vanessa is going to read in conclusion. Okay. Ready? Okay, go ahead. Okay. 
the reading and the lecture are both about the excuse are are both about the decline in sea outer populations. While the readings author states that population is a cause of their population declining, the lecturer suggests that the greatest factor is pre predation. The lecturer casts doubts on the main points made in the reading by providing three reasons. Ah, look at this, look at this. Ah, suggest, say, argue, question, conclude. Ah, so here, these are summarizing. So what are we using? We're putting two of them, not just one. Look, the reading and the lecture. What are they both talking about? I summarize it. They are both talking about this. Now, what happened in the in the reading? And sorry, in, in the reading, this is what the person says in the reading. What happens in the speaker? Oh, comma. Also, in the speaker, the person is talking about this. Ah, okay. So I have the topic of both of them the topic of only the reading, the topic of only the lecturer, the speaker, and then I have what is the difference? Do they have two differences, three differences, one main difference? Ah, that is my introduction, boom. Now I'm ready to begin writing. Now I'm getting some points, right? Now I'm starting to get some points because I already have the separation and that's going to help me when I write. Let's go for the next one. First of all, first or first of all, according to the reading, higher levels of pollution is in water samples support the pollution theory. However, the lecturer disputes this by explaining that is sea other have been killed by pollution in water. They remain will appear on shore which indicates predator ate the sea others. Okay, so I begin first, what happened in the reading? Ah, this, this, and this. Then did the lecturer agree or not agree with what happened in the reading? No, okay, he didn't agree. Why? Because of this. What is their ideas, right? So what happened in the reading? Number one. What happened in the lecture? They agree with number one? No. Okay. And then why? Why they didn't agree? That is the most important. Always what? Compare and then support. The next one. Secondly. Second, the reading states that the population of their small sea animals have been hurt by, by pollution. Nevertheless, the lecture refutes this argument. He argue, argues that because the whale population decreased nearby, orcas have to eat other instead. Mm, okay, what is this? Refutes. This is agree or disagree? Huh? Disagree. Exactly. Exactly. Remember. That is part of what the vocabulary we learn. When you have the vocabulary that we talked about here, here are the words that we can use to challenge, uh, dispute, doubt, uh, opposes, to fit. Ah, now your reading, your writing is starting to sound more professional. It's starting to sound more like an academic paper, not a, uh huh, right? It's not the same. No estoy de acuerdo. It's different than refuto lo que está diciendo. Ah, it's very different. The same ideas, but it's how you speak and how you write that is the difference of level in academic. Okay. The next one. Finally, the reading claims Finally, that the reading claims that pollutant concentration can explain the an even pattern of this all diminishing sea otter populations. Bane? Um, Bane? Yes? Okay. You're yeah, yes, I'm here. Yes, we, we stopped. We didn't hear you. Only we we listen diminishing. 
Okay. Uh, I, I will start off again, okay? Okay. Okay. Finally, the reading claims that pollutant concentration can explain the uneven pattern of these missions. Uh, other populations. On the other hand, the lecturer believes that this uneven population decline corresponds with the prevalence of orcas in different areas. He thinks that the other population declines more in places with orcas and less in those inaccessible 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 to orcas. Okay, good. Now look again the same thing. What happens? This is the final one. We said three uh, reasons. Continue. No, 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 Vanny. We said three reasons. We have one, two, and finally, or uh, the third one. What happens in the reading? Okay. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we are able to hear you. Okay. Nice. Yes, nice. Then we have what happened in the reading. Then does the person, the lecturer. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Do you have a question? Okay, then we have the part here, a compare again to the reading from the lecture. And then finally, why? Compare, they agree, they don't agree. Okay, they don't agree. Oh, but why don't they agree? Oh, he thinks that this. Ah, that's how you're going to get it. Look, the paragraph doesn't have to be big paragraphs. Is one sentence two sentences, and then three sentences, the final. So is statement from the reading, compare from the lecture, and give the support. Why yes? <clears throat> okay. And the final one, Jefferson? Okay. In conclusion, I'll doubt the reading and the lecture, but concert hypothesis about diminishing sea other populations. The three main points made in the reading are effectively challenged by the lecture. Okay, so these are the three main points. And what happens? Well, the lecture doesn't agree with them because of these three main points. And that's it. Super easy to summarize, okay? In conclusion, the reading and the lecture, what? They both talk about this. They both agree on this. But the lecture doesn't agree on those points that we talked about. Any questions? Uh, teacher, teacher, someone... I'm sorry. Yes, Go ahead. Yes, Sandra. Yes, many of us uh, never have done a, any a, any essay. Yes. Uh, but uh, the essay ha, have a, ha, no, and the essay has several points to to develop to develop, right? Uh, first of all, is the introduction, mm -hmm. the, the the body or the development. Yes. And then uh, the and that's it. And and the conclusion and, and also the um the only practice. three parts. Only three parts. Only three parts. The um, introduction, the body, and the conclusion. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, teacher. Now, that yes. part. Remember uh, when someone told me, "Hey, you can write a letter in Spanish." When you write a letter to familiar or something, yeah, uh, something like that, you need to know about the structure about the, the, the letter. I remember about the answer that part of the, the TOEFL exam. Make sure the structure, how I structure my ideas when I write. Exactly. This is the biggest difference, the structure. Yeah. The yeah. structure. So what is the most important? Introduction, no opinion. Introduction are facts. 
the picture. real about this. Sorry, yes, Jeff. When, or I, when, when, when I read the paragraph and I listen the opposite or the contrast in the in the, in the exam, it's a good idea to take a note. Yes, you know, I, I I I doing that in Spanish. Yes, take a, a keywords. After that, organize my ideas about that keywords. Yes, it's very important, especially because the reading is academic and the lecture is academic. Ah, so okay. When you have these two levels of speaking, if you don't take notes, it's difficult for you to say, oh, I remember th these three are the disagreements. Yeah. Right. This is the yeah. this is the hard part is yeah. it's like when you are watching, when you are trying to identify a, a story. This is the idea for the police, a detective. Mm -hmm. The detective mm -hmm. is trained to listen to your story and listen for parts that are not the same when you tell the story again. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same thing. So this is the same. This is the idea for this integrated question. Mm -hmm. You have a story, which is the reading. You have mm -hmm. a story, which is the listening, mm -hmm. okay? And okay. then this is like in the police. Hey, Walter, tell me your story. Escribime, ¿qué pasó? Okay, I have it, thank you. Now tell me, contámelo. Ah, so ah, okay. now, now the job is to yeah. find what are the differences. Yeah. What is the difference yeah. between, yeah. is true? If it's true, Walter always is the same story, speaking yeah. or writing. But mm -hmm. if it's not true, ah, and this is similar to the lecture and the writing. It's mm -hmm. not true because they don't agree. But what? They don't agree in what points? You have to take notes because you are not going to have the opportunity. I again, listen again, listen again. No, you're not going to have this opportunity. That's the difficult part. And then now you have to write it like a professional. Introduction. The reading is about this. The lecture is about this. They disagree on these many points. Boom. Then they disagree on two points. Okay. First and second point. Con and then the last part, conclusion. They disagree on three points. Okay. First, second, and third. And then the conclusion. But the same idea to help you structure. Hey teacher, the, the, the exam TOEFL have a, a, a several question about writing or, or only it's a case? No, no, they don't have several questions. They give you two integrated, they give you two questions. Oh. And each question you have about 20, like I said, 20, 20, 25 minutes. Ah, okay. So with two questions, it's 50 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Two questions is why? Because you are expected to write. They you are expected to write. Look at that writing. If we hang on, let me show you the writing. How many words? How is it structured? How is the component? Look, one, two, yeah. three, four, five paragraphs. Yeah. First paragraph, introduction. Mm -hmm. Then they have three paragraphs mm -hmm. for the body. And then mm -hmm. one paragraph for the conclusion. Okay. But the structure said uh, is necessary around three hundred or three hundred fifty words. If we go back, it, I think it was they recommend two hundred and fifty to three hundred uh, words. But oh. always yes. So if you look here, in average, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, about 15, 16, 17 sentences. We have mm -hmm. 17 sentences. And each sentence is about uh, 13 to 15 words. So it's a little bit over 200, uh, almost 250 words. Mm -hmm. That is the idea. No, it's not necessary to be super long, mm -hmm. but it has to have, it has to answer the question specifically. Mm -hmm. okay okay all right so anybody have any questions are you ready to practice do you feel confident we have enough time to practice one writing one writing assignment okay uh, teacher only 
equation. Finally, it, we can use it for conclusion or, or finally, for me, is to finish a, a, a lecture, maybe. And in conclusion, too, the same. Yes, okay. you can use it. Very good question. Actually, finally, is is a, a sequence word or for mm -hmm. summarizing. So that yes. means if you have a list, one, two, three, four, five, the last in the list, you can yes. use finally. Okay. Wow. Yes. Or you can use it as a conclusion. In the end, at the end of the movie or at the end of the thing, ah, this is also like a conclusion. Finally, this happened. Okay. This is Thank to you. show results. Yes. Uh, Walter ate a lot of pupusas. He drank a lot of soda. And mm -hmm. finally, he threw up. <laughs> the consequence. This is the other function of finally. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Are we ready to practice? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so then we have one practice is in the platform. It's super easy because it's already in our platform. It's the integrated writing task. The integrated writing task the same that we saw here in the example, you have a reading, you have a listening, and then you have a question. Here is your reading, here is your listening, and then you write your answer. <clears throat> yes? Yes. Okay, don't worry, we're gonna make small groups, but if you need help, you ask your partner, you share. But the idea is more than anything is just to watch, focus on yourself. Uh, the listening, you can listen together. It's not a problem. Read it together. Okay. But now we are, you have time to do one of the exercise. Only one writing we're going to have time for. Yes. Okay. No questions. Let's go. Let's do it then. Daniel, are you having problems? I'll share my screen with you. Okay. Um, you can read it. We'll also listen. Okay. I see you got it. There, a little bit better. We'll do the listening as well. Now listen to part of a lecture on the topic you just read about. Being able to communicate using language is one of our human species' most important abilities. Some scientists claim that apes, like humans, also use languages. There are many studies into ape acquisition of language, some famous, such as the Coco studies. But are these animals really acquiring language? We really haven't done enough research to address the question of how and when humans started using language, but we can compare human and ape communicative abilities to determine whether the claims about ape language are valid. First, for behavior to be called language, it must be communicative. In other words, the signers must be able to use language creatively. They should be able to take turns in conversation, 
must sign spontaneously rather than as a response to drilling or coercion and must be able to comment on interesting phenomena. If you think about what the apes have accomplished in communicating, these criteria have not been met. However, according to the proponents of ape communication, the animals do meet these criteria. They maintain that those of us who question the validity of this research have never worked with apes. However, we wonder how much influence their probable emotional attachment to an animal has on the conclusions they reach. Is there a solution in sight that would put an end to this controversy? Yes, there might be. Studies are being undertaken at the neurophysiological level. Through the use of modern brain scanning techniques, such as MRI, we may be able to get a better picture of the brain activity of a healthy human during communication and an ape while supposedly communicating. A comparison of these scans should give us an insight into whether apes really do communicate. Summarize the points made in the lecture you just heard, explaining how they cast doubt on the points made in the reading. Okay, so now let's take a moment to read. Okay. Let's see. Investigations made laboratories in various parts of the world indicate that apes are capable of understanding language and using linguistic responses at the level of young children. Just because these animals do not have the physical apparatus for producing the speech, we should not assume that they cannot understand and learn language. According to researchers who have worked closely with apes, when these animals are given other means to communicate, they do indeed show sophisticated communicative abilities. These researchers provide evidence of gorillas using sign to show humor, to insult, to threaten, to produce metaphorical language, and to engage in fantasy play. Coco, a lowland gorilla, seems to have understood a poem written about her. Tests of Coco's auditory comprehension show that she was able to distinguish between the words such as funny, money, and bunny. Similar claims have been made for Michael, a male companion of Coco, who also learned to discriminate between many sounds. Washu, an adult chimpanzee raised as if she were a deaf child, was able to translate words she heard in American Sign Language. Another study consisted of teaching a chimpanzee, a chim, uh, sorry, a chimpanzee named Kansi how to communicate using a keyboard of symbols. This study compared the series of stages that a human child goes through with those of Kansi. Kansi moved through these stages in much the same way as children, up to a particular stage of development, and in fact, did better than a young child on a test that measured only the ability to comprehend given requests. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for the related lectures and taking notes. Ours here for this one should only be between 150 to 225. Always we should try to focus on getting at least 200 words. So what do we need to do? We need really to, we will not write our own opinion about this. We're going to summarize the points made in the lecture and explain how they support or challenge what is written in the passage. So do they support or do they challenge this? If they challenge, which points do they challenge? If they support, how many points do they support and why? This is the important part of the integrated writing tasks. Now listen to part of a lecture on the topic you just read about. Being able to communicate using language is one of our human species' most important abilities. Some scientists claim that apes, like humans, also use languages. There are many studies into ape acquisition of language, some famous, such as the Coco studies. But are these animals really acquiring language? We really haven't done enough research to address the question of how and when humans started using language but we can compare human and ape communicative abilities to determine whether the claims about ape language are valid. First, 
For behavior to be called language, it must be communicative. In other words, the signers must be able to use language creatively. They should be able to take turns in conversation, must sign spontaneously rather than as a response to drilling or coercion, and must be able to comment on interesting phenomena. If you think about what the apes have accomplished in communicating, these criteria have not been met. However, according to the proponents of ape communication, the animals do meet these criteria. They maintain that those of us who question the validity of this research have never worked with apes. However, we wonder how much influence their probable emotional attachment to an animal has on the conclusions they reach. Is there a solution in sight that would put an end to this controversy? Yes, there might be. Studies are being undertaken at the neurophysiological level. Through the use of modern brain scanning techniques, such as MRI, we may be able to get a better picture of the brain activity of a healthy human during communication and an ape while supposedly communicating. A comparison of these scans should give us an insight into whether apes really do communicate. Summarize the points made in the lecture you just heard, explaining how they cast doubt on the points made in the reading. So, after listening, after reading, do they... Sorry, after listening and after reading, do they cast doubt? Do they support? Well, in our instruction, it says whether they support or cast doubt. But here, in the final part... Kate. Summarize the points made in the lecture you just heard, explaining how they cast doubt on the points made in the reading. Mm. So, according to that, we know that it's going to be things that are don't agree. They cast doubt. So, we need to summarize how they cast doubts of things in it. What does that mean? That's super easy. It just means how are they different? How is this listening, reading from this one? From the speaker is different from this one. Here. Make a little bit bigger. There. Okay. So, here. One more time. Investigations made at laboratories in various parts of the world indicate that the apes are capable of understanding language and using linguistic response at the level of young children. Just because these animals do not have the physical apparatus for producing the speech, we should not assume that they cannot understand and learn new language. According to the researchers who have worked closely with apes, when these animals are given other means to communicate, they do indeed show sophisticated communicative abilities. These researchers provide evidence of gorillas using signs to show humor, to insult, to threaten, to produce metaphorical language, and to engage in fantasy play. Coco, a lowland gorilla, seems to have understood a poem written about her. Tests of Coco's auditory comprehension show that she was able to distinguish between the words such as funny, money, and bunny. Similar claims have been made for Michael, a male companion of Coco's, who also learned to discriminate between many sounds. Washu, an adult chimpanzee raised that she were a deaf child, was able to translate words she heard in the American Sign Language. Another study consisted of teaching a chimpanzee named Kansi how to communicate using a keyboard of symbols. The study compared the series of stages that a human child goes through with those of Kansi. Kansi moved through these stages in much the same way, same way as children, up to a particular stage of development, and in fact, did better than a young child on a test that measured only the ability to comprehend given requests. So, what are, what are they saying that are different? Well, let's listen one more time.
Now listen to part of a lecture on the topic you just read about. Being able to communicate using language is one of our human species' most important abilities. Some scientists claim that apes, like humans, also use languages. There are many studies into ape acquisition of language, some famous, such as the Coco studies. But are these animals really acquiring language? We really haven't done enough research to address the question of how and when humans started using language, but we can compare human and ape communicative abilities to determine whether the claims about ape language are valid. First, for behavior to be called language, it must be communicative. In other words, the signers must be able to use language creatively. They should be able to take turns in conversation, must sign spontaneously rather than as a response to drilling or coercion, and must be able to comment on interesting phenomena. If you think about what the apes have accomplished in communicating, these criteria have not been met. However, according to the proponents of ape communication, the animals do meet these criteria. They maintain that those of us who question the validity of this research have never worked with apes. However, we wonder how much influence their probable emotional attachment to an animal has on the conclusions they reach. Is there a solution in sight that would put an end to this controversy? Yes, there might be. Studies are being undertaken at the neurophysiological level. Through the use of modern brain scanning techniques, such as MRI, we may be able to get a better picture of the brain activity of a healthy human during communication and an ape while supposedly communicating. A comparison of these scans should give us an insight into whether apes really do communicate. Summarize the points made in the lecture you just heard, explaining how they cast doubt on the points made in the reading. Okay, and at that moment, that's when your 20 minutes would begin, and you would be forced to do both of those, the integrated writing tasks. Okay, tomorrow we're going to practice the writing practice test. Similar to integrated writing tasks, we're going to have this one. Okay. This is the one that we have at the moment. Tomorrow we're going to practice the writing test practice. And then we want to make sure also we get all of this ready. And we are finished. Okay, so how are you guys doing? Pretty good? Don't worry, I know you didn't... Better than, than the other class. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, teacher, uh, um, I'm honest with you. I need more time in order to practice that, but it's so interesting because in my mind, a lot of ideas in order to try to write, right? Yep. The important is practice the structure. Yeah, yeah. You need to have a plan. So yeah. if you can have a lot of ideas, but if you don't have a plan, you don't know how to integrate or how to use the ideas correctly. So practice the first thing, boom, introduction. At the beginning, you already know your introduction. You already know the conclusion. You already know what you're going to talk about. This is when they talk about the outline. Ah, so the outline is in the beginning is going to be this. And then in point one, it's going to be uh, the food. Point two is going to be the, the education. And then finally, this helps you to develop each one even better. 
But don't worry, we're going to have, today was reviewing and helping us practice. Tomorrow, we'll have time to do two writing tasks to make sure that everybody completes them. Remember, the writing is slow. Don't say, I, I, we, no, you really, it takes between 20, 25 minutes just to do one question, just to do one question. And you want to do it well, and we want to learn to do it well, okay? All right, guys. Thank you so much for connecting. I'll see you Thank tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thank, Thank you. you. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.